Since the Industrial Revolution, signs and symbols and logos have become an important part of helping us navigate our way through life. We know that signs and logos help us uh, recognize a company or somebody we want to do business with or a place we need to go in order to get something that we need in life. And signs can also help direct us where we need to be or help us to avoid a pitfall or a danger. Logos help identify things. This past week, a particular apple with a bite out of it was one of the biggest news stories as many people waited with bated breath for the unveiling of the new iPhone 6, right? And children, as we celebrate our children today, especially with the beginning of Sunday school, we know that it doesn't take long for our children to figure out as they're riding in the car what those two big golden arches mean as we're driving down the road. And when we're in the midst of a medical emergency, it's that blue sign with an H on it that can often make the difference between life and death, can help us get to where we need to be in order to get the response in time for whatever will help fix us or heal us when things go wrong or we are hurting. So signs and symbols and logos are important things. Even here at the church, throughout most of our history, we've had our own logo to identify ourselves, the sailing boat. And as we've gone through this 100th anniversary year, we've made a minor adjustment to our logo. We've added a net to it to remind ourselves that as we celebrate the blessings of the past that God has given to us, as we move to the future, we want to remember we're all fishers of men, that we want to open our doors and invite as many people as possible into the safety of the boat, into the safety of the church, so they too can know God's love. And this past week, I wrote a letter to our local officials asking them to help us with the signs that are on the road in the front of the church. I don't know if you know this, but Crest Drive in front of the church on Sunday mornings is a one-way street up until 1 p.m. in the afternoon from Vernon Valley Road going that way. But the signs over here aren't very clear, so a lot of our neighbors and even some of our members come flying through this way on Sunday mornings. So we want to help clear up the signage so it's a little bit safer as people cross the street from the parking lot. Signs and logos and symbols, an important part of life. Sometimes when couples are first dating, when they're in that getting to know you stage, one of the questions that they ask each other is, what's your sign? It's a reference to the astrological chart. The idea behind that is, in the month in which you were born under the stars that you're born under, that that affects your personality, your character, and who you get along with and who you can relate to. Now, I haven't really put a lot of merit in this through the years, but I know there's some people who really enjoy it, especially for entertainment, and they read their horoscope every day to figure out what may or may not happen to them. So in preparation for today's sermon, I took a look at my horoscope for this week. I'm a Capricorn. I'm born in January. It told me that there are a lot of changes that are coming around me. All right, that's typical, right? So then I thought about it, and I thought about, well, maybe I ought to check out what my wife, Lisa, what her, her horoscope says for her. She's a Gemini born in June. And hers said that there are going to be a lot of changes going on around her, but she has the strength to deal with it. Thank God. What if it said there were changes going on around her and she had to get rid of the changes? That wouldn't have voted very well for me, right? We have a little bit of fun. But just like those horoscopes are supposedly supposed to tell us a little bit about who we are, our character, and our personality, we're here today to celebrate the sign and the symbol that gets to the heart of our God, the cross. The cross is that symbol that is recognized worldwide. And this symbol is so important, so vital to us, that since the 4th century, for 1,700 years, the church's calendar has appointed today Holy Cross Day. So God's people, so us as the community of faith, can have the opportunity to focus a little upon what this symbol means to us. And just like those horoscopes, the sign of the cross gets us to the heart of God, gets us to the character of God. The cross is one of the most popular and beloved symbols throughout the world. And that's pretty ironic when you think about it. Because the cross, when it was first used by the Romans, was not intended to be a sign of love 
or a sign of comfort. The cross was intended to be a symbol that would deter people's behavior. The cross was a very public way of punishing people, putting them to death for being criminals. The cross was supposed to strike fear in the hearts of people so that they would change their behavior. They wouldn't do the same things that the criminal did that ended up on the cross. And yet the cross for us is always a sign of hope. And the reason for that is what goes into that symbol of the cross for us. What's behind the symbol of the cross. It's what Jesus was telling us in that most popular gospel lesson out of all the Bible. For God so loved the world. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. But to save the world from sin. That the heart of God is about that sacrifice of love seen for us in Jesus. And Jesus went on as he talked about the power of the cross to reference another time in the history of God's people where symbolism was important. He talked about the events that we heard about in our Old Testament lesson where Moses was called by God to help the Israelites find the promised land. Remember what had happened up until this moment, where here there's a little bit of unrest among the Israelites. God had led Moses to help the Israelites gain their freedom from their slavery at the hands of the Egyptians. God did many mighty acts, the ten plagues, the, the Passover angel. Then when they were finally free, God parted the Red Sea so that they could get to the Promised Land, so they could be on their way. And now they were wandering away uh, on their way. They had their freedom. They were getting to the land. And they began to forget the great power and mighty acts of God. They began to grumble against God and against Moses. They began to complain to the point that a riot was about to ensue. They wanted to overthrow Moses as their leader. So God sent them another symbol, a not-so-happy sign. He allowed the poisonous snakes to infiltrate the camp to remind them of things that are harmful. To give them signs of when they're putting themselves in danger. This is another part of the character and the love of God. God gives us his law, his rules, his boundaries to deter us from those things that are harmful to us. To turn us away from those things that can hurt us. That's another important part of love, is keeping people safe. But God did not leave those Israelites without hope. He instructed Moses to put a serpent on the pole and raise the pole in the center of the camp that then they were bitten by the poisonous snakes and they looked at the pole in faith they would live and be healed. And that symbol of the snake on the pole would foreshadow the cross where people would look to when the effects of sin and death affect us. And if you think about it, that symbol of the snake on the pole is a precursor to the symbol that's on every single ambulance that comes to rescue us when we are in a time of need. The cross is God's sign and logo and symbol to us that in the midst of a life that's filled and struggles with sin and death, there is that hope and that healing and that peace that God gives. Sadly, as you know, the symbol of the cross is not as prominent as a popular as it used to be throughout the world. There's a larger percentage of the population that doesn't think that the cross is necessary or that what happened on the cross is real. And I think one of the reasons for this is because we're less willing to define things as sin. There's more and more moral ambiguity in the world as we live today. But that does not negate the reality of sin. It is real. And it leads to death. Yet in the face of that, the sign of the cross is God's assurance that we always have hope. That no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the struggle and sin, whether it's self-inflicted or brought upon us by the world around us, God is always there to heal us, to guide us, and to bless us. So we lift high the cross. We lift it higher than all the other signs in the world. We lift it higher than all the, the iPhone sales that take place. And we lift it higher than those golden arches. We lift high the cross. Because it's the only sign that lasts forever. Amen.